Erica wants to find her true love, so she's visiting a speed dating event. She talks to three strangers. Each guy tells her some brief facts about himself. Victor says, I'm an architect. I've recently built the largest skyscraper in this city, and now I want to settle down and find a beautiful wife. Jason says, I run my own bakery chain. I've never had any serious relationships because I was too busy with my work. And Edgar says, I recently got fired, but it's okay because my parents are billionaires. I'd like to find a soulmate to travel the world. Who uh -oh. should Erica choose? Take a closer look at Victor. His teeth are too sharp. He doesn't eat or drink anything, and he doesn't have any shadow. It's not safe to date a vampire. As for Jason, he clearly wore a wedding ring. There's a tan line on his ring finger. Therefore, he's a liar. That's why Erica should choose Edgar. After the event, Erica enters her favorite Indian restaurant near her apartment. She makes an order, puts her bag on one of the tables, and goes to the restroom. After a couple of minutes, she returns and finds out that oh, someone no. had stolen her bag. The waiter says, I saw someone with a neck tattoo running into the restaurant's second floor. Erica goes upstairs and finds three possible suspects. Can you spot the thief? This lady is the only one who has a big enough paper bag to hide Erica's bag. And there's also a wig inside her bag. The next day, Edgar calls Erica and invites her on a date. He offers her to pick the place. Erica wants to test Edgar's logical skills. So, she sends him this rebus. Can you help Edgar show up to the right place? This rebus means Central Square. Finally, Edgar and Erica meet at the Central Square. Uh -oh. They spot that one of the people in the crowd is a time traveler. Can you guess who? It's this guy. Who's jogging in wooden shoes in the 21st century? Edgar invites Erica to an exclusive party. But unfortunately, the guard refuses to let them in without a password. Edgar says, oh, come on, give us a hint. The guard says, OK, what time of the day reads the same backward and forward? Can you help the guys crack the code? The correct answer is noon. The next day, Erica invites Edgar over for dinner. She has some candies in the kitchen. They look similar but have three different flavors. Three orange, two strawberry, and five grape candies. Suddenly, the lights turn off in the entire building. Now the kitchen is completely dark. How many candies must Erica take out to make sure she has at least one candy of each flavor? To figure out the minimal number of candies, subtract one from the smallest number and then add all the larger numbers to it. And you'll get nine. Erica locked her computer with a password and wrote some hints on a sticker. Edgar wants to see her shopping list to pick the perfect gift for Valentine's Day. So in Erica's absence, he tries to log in. Let's take a look at the hints. Can you help him crack this code? It's not just a list of products, see? The correct password is pilot. Today is Edgar and Erica's wedding day. Man, they move fast. In the morning, the bride is getting ready. First of all, she goes to the shower for 20 minutes. When she returns to her room, oh, no. she finds out that someone had stained her wedding dress. Only the bridesmaids had access to this dress. So Erica questions them. Lily says, 
In the last 20 minutes, I was chatting with your mom in the living room. She can confirm my words. Rosie says, I'm not proud of it, but I was in the kitchen secretly eating some snacks prepared for the wedding dinner. And Daisy says, I've been dealing with a flower shop. They delivered the wrong flowers. Can you guess who stained the dress? It was Rosie. There's the same mud under her shoes. It's time to start the ceremony, but Edgar is missing. His mad ex-girlfriend Zoe is a witch. She sneaked into the wedding, caught Edgar, and cloned him. Erica finds Zoe and six different Edgars in the basement. Zoe says, I wanted to make some copies of Edgar to keep him with me. Now I have enough. You can take your husband back. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't remember who's the original. Can you help Erica spot the real Edgar? The third one. All the others have paranormal powers. The wedding begins, but there's a thief among the guests. Can you spot this person? It's this innocent looking lady with two purses. Edgar and Erica are going to India for their honeymoon. Can you see what's wrong with their plane? Open fire is prohibited on board. The stewardess must know that. After landing, Edgar and Erica take a taxi and go to their hotel. Suddenly, they see a family of ducks crossing the road. Erica takes a picture, but unfortunately, it's unfocused. Can you count the exact number of ducks? Let's take a look at one duck at a time. We can see two beaks, so there's another duck behind the first one. And here, we have two little ducks near the bigger one. And this duck is single. So far, the overall sum is six. This guy is not a duck, it's a goose. But there's one more duck hiding behind him. And three more over here. So the overall number is ten. Erica and Edgar arrive at their hotel. Four employees greet them in the lobby, but one of them is an imposter. Can you guess who? Take a look at the logo of this hotel. It's a lotus with six petals, but the logo on this lady's badge has a five-petal lotus. Therefore, she's a fake employee. The hotel manager gives the guys a key to the best room for the newlyweds. They go to check out the room, but when they see the interior, they immediately oh, ask no. for another one. Why? There's a transparent lizard crawling along the curtains. This potted flower has teeth, and someone is clearly peeping at them through the eyes of this portrait on the wall. Erica, Edgar, and their tour guide go hiking. They have three backpacks, one with sleeping bags and a tent, one with warm clothes and camping gear, and the heaviest one, a backpack with food. Each has to choose one backpack to carry. Erica readily agrees to take the heaviest one. Why? It'll be getting lighter and lighter after each camp. On the way, the guys decide to go explore the local caves. They walk inside and suddenly a landslide blocks the way back. There are four tunnels ahead, each with a sign telling you which dangers lurk inside. There's a family of evil wizards living in the first tunnel. They curse every human who dares to come in. The second tunnel is filled with venomous spiders. The third one is swarmed by bats, and the fourth tunnel is on fire. Which one do you choose to stay safe?
They should pick the second tunnel. Spiders don't hurt people for food. Finally, the guys get outside and see a tree with many beautiful parrots. Can you count the exact number of birds in this tree? The task was to count the number of all birds, so there are 10 birds in this tree, including 6 parrots. In the evening, Erica and Edgar are walking in the city. They see a local parade, but there's a thief among the performers. Can you see him too? This guy is sneaking her bracelet. It's the holiday season, but some evil force is doing its best to spoil the mood. No one knows what this force is or why it's ruining the holidays. That's when Detective Robinson comes into play. Help him crack these riddles to save the day. The first task brings the detective to the North Pole. Someone has been stealing Santa's cookies, which he keeps in the reindeer stables. Santa suspects that the criminal is one of his elves who works there but he's also worried because all of them are allergic to chocolate and the disappearing cookies are chocolate chip ones. Detective Robinson gathers all the elves in one room. One of them keeps sticking out his tongue and then blushing and apologizing. The second elf has traces of something brown on his hands and the third elf keeps smiling and giggling. Look at them attentively and try to figure out which one is the thief. The guy with the brownish spots on his fingers works in the stables, so no wonder his hands are dirty. Elves are cheerful creatures, which means that a smiling and giggling elf is not actually an unusual occurrence. But the first elf, his tongue is likely swollen as a result of an allergic reaction. Here's our cookie thief. Three teenagers sneak into Santa's home. When he comes home after work, he sees three guilty-looking kids and his 20-foot uh -oh. tall plastic Christmas tree lying on the floor. Santa knows that one of the kids must have climbed the tree, which made it fall over. He calls our detective. Chris immediately arrives. After looking at the kids attentively, he tells Santa who is guilty. Can you figure it out too? This guy with green hair looks as if he has some Christmas tree needles in his hair. But don't forget that the tree is plastic and can't lose any needles. The guy on the left has a star on his sweater that looks like the one at the top of the tree. But look, it's embroidered. Now, look at this girl with a pretty sparkly scarf. It looks suspiciously similar to tinsel decorating the Christmas tree. That's because it is tinsel. Busted! While the detective and Santa are away, solving the mystery of the overturned Christmas tree, someone steals all the presents from Santa's warehouse. Uh oh. After investigating the case, Detective Robinson has three suspects. All of them are elves. Each of the elves claims he was at home when the crime happened. The road is impossible to navigate on foot since it's been snowing for the last several hours. So, whoever did this had to use a sleigh. Can you help Chris figure out who the criminal is? This elf looks pretty angry, but it might be because his sleigh is broken. It means he couldn't have left his home. The sleigh of the elf on the right is covered with a thick layer of snow. It's unlikely that he used it recently, but look at the sleigh of the elf in the middle. There's snow under it. It means that the sleigh was parked near the house after the snow had already started falling. The elf wasn't at home, so why is he lying? One of Santa's elves put the key to the warehouse where Santa keeps presents into an empty bottle and plugged it with a cork. Detective Robinson needs to remove the key without breaking the bottle or pulling out the cork. How can he do it?
Chris pushed the cork inside the bottle and shook the key out. Detective Robinson's next task is unusual to say the least. He needs to go to a haunted gingerbread mansion and face one of three horrifying monsters. They've taken up residence in the tasty but currently unapproachable house. Chris's potential opponents are 1. A 7-foot-tall reanimated Christmas turkey. It's threatening the detective with knives and looks extremely unfriendly. 2. A scorching hot eggnog monster that looks like a moving pile of slime. 3. Or a menacing-looking 8-foot-tall candy cane creature with long, sharp limbs. Uh -oh. Help the detective make the right choice. The turkey can be very dangerous with those knives. The candy cane monster's limbs are too sharp to come close to it. As for eggnog, besides being very hot, it doesn't pose any serious danger. The detective just needs to push the monster towards the gingerbread wall and it will absorb the creature very fast. Santa has an unusual problem. One of his elves has just had his birthday, but Santa can't remember how old he's turned. The elf doesn't want to make the task easier. He says, The day before yesterday, I was 34. The next year, I'll be 37. It sounds strange, but the elf hasn't made any mistakes in his calculations. Santa definitely needs Detective Robinson's help. The elf's birthday is on December 31st, and he's talking about it with Santa on January 1st. The day before his birthday, he was 34. The next day, he turned 35. A new year started the next day. This year, he's going to turn 36, and he will be 37 the following year. No day without an accident. One young elf decided to play a prank on Santa and hid the presents behind one of these two doors. Detective Robinson knows that one of the doors hides a very unfriendly dragon. And behind the other, there are presents. He needs to pick the right door, otherwise the holiday is spoiled. There are two signs on the doors. One of them is a lie, and the other is true. On the first door, it's written, The presents are here. The dragon is in the next room. The other sign says, The presents and the dragon aren't in the same room. Can you help the detective figure out where the presents are? The presents are in the second room. The second statement is true, which means that the first one is false. After a long working day, Santa comes home and finds out that someone has broken all the glass decorations on his Christmas tree. He's shocked and upset. He calls Detective Robinson and tells him he has two suspects. One of them is one of his reindeer. Santa saw him near his house two hours ago. The other suspect is an elf Santa scolded. Look at the scene and help the detective determine the criminal. Look at the footprints the criminal left on the floor. They're too big and don't belong either to the deer or the elf. They actually look like they belong to Santa himself. But why would he need to frame his workers? This case makes Detective Robinson very suspicious. He starts observing Santa. Soon, Santa invites him for dinner and offers him three dishes to choose from. Since Chris is already wary of Santa, he examines the dishes very attentively. Look at them and say which dish is safe to eat. These chocolate chip cookies look fine until you notice that these chocolate chips are actually bugs. The steam rising over this bowl of soup is suspiciously green. This dish is likely poisoned. The only safe option is apples. Look at this tiny worm. If it can munch through the apple, it's most likely okay to eat. So, does it mean Santa wanted to get rid of Chris after the detective started to suspect something? This Santa can't be the real one.
After Detective Robinson finds out that the mysterious evil force spoiling the holidays has been the fake Santa all along, he starts searching for the real Santa. Soon, he comes across a basement with three doors. Behind each of them, there's a man dressed as Santa and claiming to be the real one. Look at them attentively and try to figure out which Santa is real. It's Santa on the left! Hopefully you paid attention to the photo on the wall. It depicts Santa with his reindeer. If we compare the photo with all Santas, only the one on the left is absolutely the same. Just look at this! A car has crashed into a restaurant window, smashing it! Uh -oh. Detective Harris has come to investigate the case. There are two suspects, Julie and Douglas. But each of them claims that the other person did it. Can you help the detective figure out who is lying? It's Julie. The tire tracks on the ground belong to her car. Adam was driving home late at night when he noticed he was about to run out of gas. He stopped at a gas station to fill his tank and buy some snacks. Inside, there was a cashier and another customer dressed in black. When Adam came up to the employee to pay, she told him $5.05. Adam paid, went outside, and called the police to report an emergency. Why did he do it? The cash register showed 1835, but the cashier said 505, which looks like SOS. Detective Harris was walking along the street when he heard some noise. He decided to check out what had happened. It turned out that some man had grabbed an elderly lady's bag and run away. The detective ran in the direction the witnesses showed him. After he turned the corner, he saw three doors. He knocked on the first one. The apartment owner, Patrick, opened the door. The man told the detective he'd just returned from a long run. Another man, Jerry, opened the second door. He said he'd been playing basketball behind his house. The third apartment belonged to Raymond, a musician. He had just finished composing a new piece of music. After talking to all these people, Detective Harris understood who the criminal was. Have you figured it out? The thief is Jerry. He claimed he'd been playing basketball, but he was holding a football while talking to the detective. Sarah and her sister, Mary, were doing some shopping. When they were leaving a grocery store, Sarah pointed at some young man and exclaimed, Look, my nephew is over there! Her sister replied, Oh, right, but it's not my nephew. How is it possible? The young man is Mary's son. Gemma returned from Asia and brought a precious porcelain figurine. She organized a party and invited all her friends to tell them about her journey. They had a great time, but after her friends left, the woman realized the figurine had disappeared. She called the police and showed them the photo she had taken at the party. One of the officers immediately realized who had stolen the figurine. Did you understand it too? It was this girl. She hid the figurine under her hat. At 9 a.m., Ethan got a call from his friend, an owner of a large business. The man said that a very important document had disappeared from his office. It had been on his desk the evening before, but now it was nowhere to be found. Ethan immediately came there to question his friend's employees. Soon, he had three suspects. Walter said he'd spent the previous evening at the movies. Joan had dinner with her friends, and Zachary visited an art gallery. It didn't take Ethan long to understand who was lying. Do you know it too? It was Walter. 
his ticket isn't torn. It means he didn't enter the movie theater. Now, look at these hands and try to figure out which person is married. If you look at the first hand attentively, you'll realize it doesn't belong to a grown-up person. On the second hand, there is a mark left by a ring, but there's no ring itself. It must mean that the person is no longer married. On the third hand, there's no ring either, but it's the right hand, and we wear wedding rings on the left hand. So out of these three, this person is most likely to be married. Okay, the next challenge is for you. Look at these three men. They're at the airport. Which of these guys is married? All of these men are holding their passports and tickets in their hands. None of them is wearing a wedding ring. But pay attention to the man sitting on the bench. On his ticket, it's written, family discount. So, he must be the one who's married. Now look at this picture attentively. Does anything strike you as strange? It's winter, but butterflies are flying around the snowman. Now, try to figure out what's wrong with this image. It's the snowman again. Instead of a carrot, his nose is made of broccoli. And the last image for you to analyze. Why does the guy on the right need ski poles if he's going to snowboard? Marcus woke up in a dark basement with just one candle burning on the table. He saw three doors in one of the walls and three keys lying on the table. How many attempts will the guy need to figure out the key for each door? He'll need six attempts at the most, three of them for the first key, two attempts for the second key and two remaining doors, and just one attempt for the last key. But if Marcus is extremely lucky, he might need just three attempts. Alicia's mom asked the girl to do some grocery shopping. She gave her a shopping list and her bank card. But the woman knew her daughter was very absent-minded. That's why she gave Alicia a small note in case she forgot the card's PIN number. When the girl was at the register, she realized she had indeed forgotten the PIN. Alicia pulled the note out of her pocket and immediately remembered the code. Can you figure out what it was if the note had a fly, a cat, a person, and a snake drawn on it? The pin was 6420. Alicia just had to count the number of legs of each creature. A fancy restaurant in Los Angeles was offering a promotional deal. A married couple could eat at the restaurant for half price on their anniversary. To prevent scams, the couple would need proof of their wedding date. On a Thursday evening, a couple entered the restaurant and claimed it was their anniversary, but they didn't have any proof. The restaurant manager was called to speak with the couple. When the manager asked to hear about their wedding day, the wife said, Oh, it was a wonderful Sunday afternoon. Birds were chirping and flowers were in full bloom. After nearly 10 minutes of ranting, she told the manager that today was their 28th wedding anniversary. How lovely, the manager said. However, you do not qualify for the discount. Today is not your anniversary. You are a liar. How did the manager know it wasn't their anniversary? The calendar repeats itself every 28 years. So if they were married on a Sunday 28 years ago, the day they came to the restaurant would also have to be a Sunday. But since it was a Thursday, the manager knew they were lying. 
John called the police to report that his friend Mark had disappeared. He explained that two weeks earlier, he had offered Mark to live in his beach house in Miami. He wanted his friend to enjoy some summer heat, but when John returned from a half-month-long business trip to Chile, he found out that Mark was missing. The police listened to John's story and understood the man was lying. How did they figure it out? If it was summer in Miami, it was winter in Chile, and still John came back suntanned. It means he hadn't been to Chile. Maya was in the gym doing the workout her personal trainer had prepared for her. It was tougher and longer than her usual ones. Exhausted, Maya returned to the changing room only to find her expensive bag gone. Oh no! She immediately called the police. They had three suspects. Maya's trainer said that he had been preparing a new program for his clients. Emma, another gym goer, said she had been running on a treadmill for two hours. The cleaner said he had been washing the swimming pool. Who took Maya's bag? It was her trainer. He knew Maya was going to have a long workout and wouldn't return to the changing room anytime soon. Brooklyn stayed home alone for a week because her family went on vacation. On Tuesday, she uh -oh. discovers that she only has four breakfast buns left. She doesn't like grocery shopping alone, so she cuts them in half. How many breakfast buns does Brooklyn have now? Brooklyn might now have eight pieces, but it's still just four buns. Mrs. Palmer has three daughters, Iris, Lily, and Rose. She's about to have another girl. What do you think she'll name her? Alice, Hannah, or Poppy? Mrs. Bell seems to choose names of flowers, so she'll probably name the girl Poppy. Penelope went to the doctor, and the doctor gave her three pills that she should take every hour. How much time will pass from taking the first pill to the last pill? Just two hours. Penelope will take a pill, then she'll take a second pill in one hour, and the third pill one hour after that. So, just two hours will pass. Kennedy was exploring an old part of the city and got trapped in some basement. She found three ways out, but none of them seemed safe. Behind the first door, there is a room constructed from magnifying glass. The blazing hot sun outside will instantly fry anything or anyone that enters. Behind the second door, there's a lava floor that melts anything. Behind the third door, there's a room filled with poisonous gas that burns the skin. How can uh -oh. Kennedy escape? Kennedy should wait until night and then walk out the first door. Amy goes hiking alone and gets lost. She only has two options, to spend a night in a zombie town or in werewolf village. What should she uh -oh. choose? She should stay in the werewolf village. Take a look at the sky. The moon is not full, so the villagers are not dangerous. Madeline is a designer. She lives in a one-story house in a city suburb. She has a small garden, and everything in her house is made entirely of redwood because it's her favorite material. What color do you think the stairs in her house are? It's a tricky question. You should remember that she lives in a one-story house, so she simply doesn't have any stairs there. Okay, here's a little riddle for you to think. I have a thousand ribs, but only two backbones. What am I?
It's a railroad track. Can you think of a situation when 8 plus 8 equals 4? Yes, it's true when we talk about time. If it's 8 o'clock, then in 8 hours, it'll be 4. Ruby and Scarlet are sisters, and they always play tricks on one another. Today, Ruby came to Scarlet and said, I'll bet you $1 that if you give me $2, I will give you $3 in return. Should Scarlet accept the bet? No, she shouldn't, because even if she wins the bet, she'll lose the money. Ruby might take $2 and say, I lose the bet. I won't give you $3. She will have to return Scarlet $1, but Scarlet will keep the other dollar. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. Instead, he found a witch's house, walked in, patted a cat, and asked the witch to take her home. But the witch had a problem, and she asked Esme to help her. Last week, the witch bought a rabbit. The seller told her that the rabbits breed every month and delivers five rabbits with 60% chance and seven rabbits with 40% chance. How many rabbits will the witch have in a year? Well, that's a tricky question. It takes two rabbits to breed, so unless the witch gets a second one, she'll still have just one. Which of the following statements are true and which are false? 1. Only one of the statements is false. 2. Two of the statements are false. 3. Three of the statements are false. 4. Four of the statements are false. 5. All five of these statements are false. Since they all contradict one another, only one of them is true, and the other four are false. The only statement that reflects it is statement number four, so that's the correct one. One night a year, Santa Claus stays in his workshop on the North Pole and goes to places to deliver presents. Which direction does he travel first? Santa lives on the North Pole, and wherever you go, the only way to travel from there is south. Ellery has a cat. Her friend asked her how old the cat was, and here's what she replied. In two years, the cat will be twice as old as she was five years ago. How old is Ellery's cat? The cat is 12 years old. Esme was having a walk in a forest and got lost. After wandering around for a while, she found the house of a witch and asked her to take her home. The witch shrugged and gave her a bottle with a key in it. The key will open this door and the door will take you home. Take it out, but there are two rules. You can't pull the cork and you can't break the bottle. How can Esme get the key? Esme should push the cork inside the bottle and then take out the key. Now I'll show you some photos, and your task is to figure out what's wrong with them. Ready? Yeah! Here's the first one. There are strawberries growing on the tree. That's not right. What about this one? Do you see a mistake?
It's ancient times, but this guy right there is talking on the phone. This can't be true. Next one. Keep your eyes wide open. Do you see what's wrong in this picture? Did you pay attention to the traffic light and its colors? There's purple color instead of green. That's the mistake. Just a couple of more. Don't give up. Anything odd you can spot right here? It's night, but there's the sun in the sky. That's odd. Okay, and the last one here for you. The hardest one. Can you see a mistake in this photo? This woman doesn't get reflected in the mirror. Is it a mistake or is she just a vampire? Ava, Beth, and Chloe are best students in class, and they are participating in the end of a semester tournament. Here's how the rules go. Before hearing the question, a girl chooses a target, one of the other two girls. Then the question is read, and the girl gives her answer. If the answer is correct, the target gets eliminated. If the answer is wrong, then the turn goes to the next participant, who will then choose her target and will get her question, and so on. A subject was drawn randomly. History. Ava isn't very good in history, and her odds of giving the right answer are 1 in 3. Beth is a bit better, and her odds are 2 out of 3. Chloe is a history ace, and her odds of responding correctly are 3 out of 3. Everyone knows each other's odds. To be fair, Ava starts, and then the turn will pass to Beth, then to Chloe, and then back to Ava, and so on. Until there's one last person left. What should be Ava's strategy to have higher chances of winning? Ava should give the wrong answer, even if she knows the correct answer. Then, the turn will pass to Beth. Beth will most likely target Chloe, because she has better odds in the game. If Beth manages to eliminate Chloe, then it's just Ava and Beth left, and Ava's turn and a chance to win. If Beth doesn't eliminate Chloe, then it's Chloe's turn, who will most likely target Beth, and will definitely eliminate her, since her odds are 3 out of 3. Even though Ava will have to go against Chloe at the end, it's still a better situation because she for sure makes it to the second round safely and will then go first with her shot.